Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about logging and how we can customize our logging so we can get the username and session ID uh, into the log in Spring Boot. First of all, uh, this is my HTTP uh, interface at Spring Boot project. Uh, this means that uh, I have a lot of HTTP interfaces where I can call uh, my own API. Uh, yeah, and I also have some tests here. And actually what I need from this project, are the, that is actually the tests and the, the security part of the tests. You can see right here, I have a test uh, that is named, has the name ships and um, we have a client and it, it calls something. Uh, right here, so it calls something. This is the the, the HTTP cl client. So this is HTTP interface that we use right there. Then we get something back from the uh, from the application, uh, which is uh, also the Spring Boot application where, that we have right here. And then we log out uh, something in the idea. Then we print something out in the log. Um, yeah. So first of all, regarding author or authorization, then uh, we are log we are using Mike, and then. Um, and we're using basic authentication, so so that is actually it. So we are we are we are running uh, as Mike actually in the um, in in the authorization part right here. So this is the basic auth right there, and um, we have the security header which I'm generating right here, Mike, and the password is kiss me. Uh, it was just uh, something. It should just be something like I can write whatever I want to. Like I just want I just need some security on my API. And um, and the reason why I want that is because I want to show this beautiful lock right here. I, I all have already run the test and look what actually happens. First of all, our Spring Boot context starts up and it, it, it has some output and some info outputs. And it says no user, no session. And then suddenly it gets a request with basic authentication in the header. Look what happens. It, ha it, it has a security context. It says that the credentials, the name right here is Mike, and this is the session ID right here. So this means that if I, as a, a client to this product that I bought, maybe I bought some access for this REST API, then I can, then I can complain about whatever I got returned, or maybe I, maybe I didn't get any, maybe I got an error, then I can complain about this. And then it's very easy to find in the log files. Uh, uh, my request is very easy to find because I have the security context right here and I have my session ID right there. This means that if, if I call this API, maybe with, with 100, of the 100 different uh, endpoints, then I would actually have a new session ID per endpoint per call, uh, per call, then you would have a new session ID right here. How did you do that, Mike? Because this is not out of the box, this is Mike. No, it's not. It is definitely not. I have set up some... I've created something uh, custom, and that is what we're going to dig into. How can how can you create how can you add more information to the to the log output? Because it's not just credentials and and session IDs. You can actually add whatever you want to add. Uh, you should actually think about this log line right here as a bucket, as a hash map with the uh, with a lot of data, and then you can actually choose what what uh, what what from this bucket from this data that you actually want to present. You choose that by having a logback spring XML file, for instance. This is a very normal way, way to do it. Usually you would use SL4J uh, inside your Spring Boot application. SL4J is the abstracted layer of logging and logback is the executor. So that means that you could actually have SL4J if you want to with log4j also, um, and then, then you actually have log4j to, uh, to, to run, uh, to, actually, to actually execute the logging itself. Um, the SL4J part is just abstraction, so you can actually change. You, if you wanted to, you could actually uh, swap uh, log, logback with something else. Um, logback is quite good and it's kind of the standard, kind of the factor standard, so you probably don't want to, to swap out the logback, but maybe you have some, yeah, maybe you have a good reason for, for not using logback, then you could actually exchange it if you're using SL4J, and that is exactly what we are. Um, that's ex actually exactly what we're using. Let me just show my controller right here. Then I scroll up in the top. I'm using Lumbox. Then I annotate all of my classes with all the classes where I need some logging with add sl4j, and then I can then print out some some something like this log.info and then uh, yeah return list of, of ships. This is the, the information message right here. Usually when we are logging something, we actually we are more we are very focused on the message, and then uh, we're not uh, that focused on the yeah. Of course, we also focused on the log level because we give that right there. But of course, that there's a lot of uh, circumstances that we 
that we that is actually part of the locker that will actually that will give the assist for free, so we so which we don't have to think about. So a part of it is the timestamp, and another part right now is the credentials and the session ID. So how do you, how did you set that up, Mike? Okay, so let us look at the lockback XML file right here. The lockback XML file can actually contain it can actually contain Spring profiles, so you can have different locking you can have different lock formats for different profiles. Um, so this means when you are when you are running something local, uh, or local, or local on, on your machine, and um, and you actually you don't need all of the like thread information and CPU usage and stuff like that. Maybe you don't need the the date. You only need the time. That's what I have right here because uh, usually the the interesting part when you are uh, in my log usually is out in the right side right here. That is usually out here where I can see some some log data that I actually need. Um, so this means that that I actually want to remove as much as possible in front uh, of my log message right here. I've I've removed the thread name. I've removed the um, I've removed the 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 date, the, the year, the month, and the and the day, uh, which was part which was it was in front of the time just before. Maybe I could also remove the hour because I actually just need to know which minute it was that I ran uh, when I run locally. I don't need all of that information. I could also I could also shorten the session ID right now. We get a, lo uh, a long session ID, which is which is uh, like uh, how many characters? Uh, let me just check right here. Uh, minimum. Where are the character counts? I think you usually I get a character count if I mark something like this. Okay, I have to I have to paste it up right here. Okay, let us do that. Then. So here we have thirty two characters. So this is a thirty two characters long uh, session ID, and I, maybe I just need like six digits or eight digits or four digits, something like that. Uh, when I when I need to debug locally, that is totally uh, doable. But first of all, let us look at the the configuration that we have right here. So I have I have a, an appender which is custom. I've just named this custom console, and it uses the console appender from. Lockback. This means that it is not JSON locking. It is console line by line locking that I want to have right here. I'll make another video for the JSON locker, how to uh, how to do the same thing for for for, for, for yeah, with JSON locking. Uh, most of the times you want JSON locking when you are on the deployed environments because let's say you, that you have a lock uh, collecting framework or you have uh, if you're using the cloud then uh, then then that uh, the cloud uh, also collects the lock in in uh, in a nice JSON format, and then you can easily uh, create queries based on the JSON messages where, that are sent to that uh, to the lock management system that you are using. Um, so that's why you want you to use JSON when you're when you're deployed on some system, and you want to use console locking when you are running locally. So usually you would actually have both in your project. Here we have the encoder. This is a, and again, this name I could just have written Mike right here. Every time you see something with name, just imagine that you can write uh, potato or Mike or whatever you want to uh, in here. Uh, you could use that yourself. Uh, and what is what is important is the class that you have right here. So here I have a layout wrapping encoder, layout wrapping encoder, and here I have a layout. All of this, of course, it's not just something that I made up and, and thought of uh, by myself. This is. I read the documentation, and I read the lockback doc documentation, and I also uh, saw some Stack Overflow examples, and then I uh, then I could piece this uh, this this together. Um, it is actually it's actually amazing what you can do with lockback. It, it can do a lot. So it, when you're if you're bored one day, if you are lying on the beach, then bring uh, bring a documentation for lockback, and then uh, then then read through it. So you, you will be a you'll be a happy man, and you will not miss work while you are lying on the beach that long at least. Uh, okay, so here we have the let us go. To, so we have a custom pattern layout with user context. So this is actually where the magic happens. I'll show you my class in just a minute. But first, we want to see the pattern. This is the pattern right here. Here we have the uh, this is the dates percent D for date, and then here is, uh, this is the format. So I only want the hour, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds right here. Um, and then I want some cyan color. This is just to make it a bit spice spice it up a bit. And then here I have my user and here i have my session you cannot use these out of the box you have to add these pieces of data every time you write percentages and then something like percentage mic or something like that then you actually have to feed the logger with that information that has to be added to the 
to the locker bucket, and that is exactly why we have this custom pattern layout with user contact class right here. I'll, again, I'll show it in, in just a minute. Then we have the highlights, uh, percent highlight right here. That means it will just choose a highlight, uh, a color for highlighting. It will like to choose by a color for, uh, by itself, and then uh, it will show the, the level like info, error, etc. Minus five, that has something to do with the number of uh, spaces that we want in between the uh, the next, um, yeah, but, but, but between the, the user session and the level. Here, we could actually also write something like 15, then we will get a lot, a lot of space, but we don't want the space right now. So uh, I'll leave that out. Percent MSD, that is the message. Percent uh, N, that is new line. So if you don't want the new line, you actually don't have to use the new line. It's just a mess to look at, so uh, yeah. So, but here we want the message right here. Um, you could actually also place the message to begin with, actually. So let's you could you, you don't have to place it in the end. Um, let's say that you want you think that the message is more important than the, the level. Then you can just put the message in here in the yeah, where I have the cursor now, and then you could then you would have the message there. Yeah, yeah but let's just do that just for fun. So. So, so right now we actually think that it's more important to see the message than this to see the level. So we will run my, my test again. This is a Spring Boot test. Ships, I'll run it. It's a test not with, with the web the web context. The reason why it's so fast is because it's actually not spinning up the web context. It is just spinning up the the Spring Boot context. You can and you can choose that actually. Um, if you go up in the top right here, then you can see. Ah, oh, it actually does. It's, it is just faster than the newer versions. So. Spring Boot says web environments, uh, defined port. Uh, yeah, so it is actually using a defined port right there. Um, so that's okay. Here we have uh, Mike, the session ID. And now we have the message, and then we have the level in the end right there. So now all of the, uh, the levels are actually uh, in the end of the message right here. Okay, so let us look at this custom class that I wrote to, to enable this custom blah, 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 the pattern layout. It extends the regular lockback classic pattern layout. And of course, this is what you need to read about in the documentation, of course, if you want to do something weird. Um, or you can just follow this example. Of course, you can just clone my code. I'll put it on GitHub as usual. So just, just check out my code, uh, code and use it if you want to. Um, here I have pattern layout. And then I can then I get the default converter map. The default converter map. This is the map that contains all of the fields. So here I can actually add more fields. I can actually add my own custom fields. And this is also, if I wanted to have a field named Mike, then I would just add Mike right here. Right now I want a user, and then I take, a, then I use a user converter. Then I have a method there that says get name. And then I want a session converter. Then I have a method named uh, get name. Maybe that should have been get session or something like that instead. Uh, it's probably because I've copy pasted a bit too much, uh, but let us go to user converter to begin with. So it extends a classic converter. And again, this classic converter, that is a lockback classic pattern, classic converter uh, class. So that is, it comes from the lockback uh, library, lockback framework. Um, yeah. So you will you'll create a converter that comes, uh, yeah, that extends a classic converter. And then you can actually return whatever you want to in this method right here. You have to, uh, to override the convert method and you have the locking event right here. So here you have the event with all of the data. And then you can actually say that, the, um, then, and then you can return some kind of some, some string right there. So you could actually use something from the event if you want to, uh, or you can, uh, or in this case, actually, I, I'm, I don't need anything from the event. I need something from the security context. So I go to the security context and I say get context and I say get author authentication. And then I get this authentication object. This will sometimes be null. If you start up, uh, yeah, if it's not a web session that is, you're running right now, then it is a, the, the, there will be no authentication object. Then this should be null. This means when you start up your application, just like now, uh, just like the top lines right here, then you will not have any, um, then you'll not have any authentication object. And of, and of course, you should have some kind of string that actually shows that instead of no user, you could actually shorten this to a minus, or you can also just write blank right there instead. That, that could also be. Let us just choose minus now, just for fun, just to change something. Let us go to the session converter. Again, same story, a classic converter from the lockback uh, library. And yeah, from the lockback library, you can see it up there. Um, and then we have to all write the convert method right here. And instead of writing no session right here, we could just write a minus, then it actually takes up less space. 
Let us run our tests again now and see what actually happens now. So now we have minus minus, and then we have so it takes up this space. Then suddenly we got some names and some se some some session IDs right here. And of course, uh, I would recommend that you actually create a special version that actually of the yeah, of the session converter that actually just takes the last uh, eight digits or four digits or how many uh, yeah the number of digits the number of uh, letters number of characters that you need. So this it's it's, it's still almost always unique. Um, when you start a new web session. But there's no reason for having 32 characters of session ID here. So, yeah. So that's actually it. Uh, it's quite easy right now when you know how to do it. So that you have to create three classes. So that is not that difficult. And the most difficult part is probably to set up the logback spring uh, XML file right here. And then you have a profile, which is default right now. And I choose the appender named a custom console, a pinter ref, that means reference, reference this console up here. And here I have, I say that this should be a console appender that I need. Uh, and in the, in the next video, I'll show you how to actually use the JSON appender instead. So, yeah. Then you say layout, wrapping, encoder, and then you can actually choose your custom pattern layout with user context right here. That's it. Quite easy. Let us run the test again, just for fun. There we can see it. Here's Mike. Here's the session ID. And here I actually got test and worker. That was to begin with right there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it just works and it will save you a ton of time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much for all of the comments that you place uh, on my videos. Uh, I yeah, it, it it gives a lot of energy. Where it gives so much energy when you when you do that because then I know that um, that that there was actually at least one person out there that was uh, happy uh, with with the with, with the stuff that uh, I do and that they 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 actually could learn from 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 these videos right here. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.